come play with me. It was a Tuesday morning like every other on my way to school. It was about 6.30am when my friend got on the bus. He seemed normal, acted normal. It was a me day and I'm in a lot of his classes on me days. So I see him hot, so I see him often. Everything was just normal, just like the rest of the week. The following week, 6.30am, just like always, he got on the bus. Although he didn't say a word, he always talks. Even in the early morning when he's tired, he talks a bit. But not then. He looked pale. He's a pale kid, but he was white as a ghost. He lied there and went to sleep. All throughout every class, he just lied there. Didn't speak a word, didn't write anything, and looked as pale as ever. I figured he just had a bad argument with his family or something, or one of his pets died, but I wasn't sure. That day we rode the bus home, like always, and he still didn't say anything. He's extremely talkative in the afternoon, but just like before, I ignored him. As the weeks went on, I noticed a change in him. He'd get on the bus in the morning, sweating, with bloodshot eyes. I was getting worried for him, but still never said anything. His hair would get dirtier and greasier as the days went on. He wore the same clothes day after day. He smelled horrible. It was as if he never bothered to shower or clean himself. It became disgusting, and his acne was getting much worse. After about a month, I decided to confront him when he got on the bus that morning. I looked at him and let out the first few words I said to him in a month. What's wrong with you? I said to him. He looked up at me. His face was greasy, sweaty and pale. His pupils were large with fear. I couldn't help but think something was happening. He looked back down at the ground and opened his mouth, revealing his dark yellow teeth. It looked like he hadn't bothered I hadn't brushed his teeth either. I... He mumbled out from his breath. I can't tell you. This is the kid that tells me everything. If he can't tell me, then something is wrong. I go on through my day as always, just feeling a bit weird inside, like something killed my friend. But he was still there. I got home that day and opened up my computer. Once it loaded, I started up Skype. I noticed he was on, so I decided to call him. It rang for a while before he answered. He looked worse than he did earlier today. What? He asked me. Tell me what's wrong, I replied. He looked around as if making sure nobody was around. He took a moment. But he looked up at the camera and started talking. About a month ago, he started. I was sitting on my porch, looking out from, looking out front. Down near the driveway there was this little girl. She was drawing on my driveway with what seemed to be red chalk. I walked over there and asked if she would go away. She just looked at me and said, come play with me. I told her I didn't want to and she got up and walked away. As I was heading to bed, I went to close the blinds on my window when I saw her near my garage, sitting perfectly still, just drawing with her red chalk. It was nearly midnight and I wondered what a seven-year-old girl was doing at this time of night. I rubbed my eyes and she was gone. I thought it was just my mind because I was tired. I was wrong. Every fucking night I see her getting closer and closer. Last night I woke up in the middle of the night. He took a big gulp. I, I heard the door. Oh, I heard a door open outside my room. No walking, nothing. Just a door slowly creaking open. I thought it was my sister. I slowly opened the door to see a little girl across the hall, drawing on the walls. Come play with me. I keep hearing. Come play with me. Come play with me. It won't get out of my head. That's all I hear now. I came home from school. And there was fucking blood everywhere on my walls. I ran and told my parents. But you just think I'm fucking crazy. The blood was gone when I came back. He stopped and looked at the floor. It was hard to believe. But if it was a prank, he wouldn't take it this far. He was going insane. He looks up at me 
him with the bloodshot eyes. He starts, I can't change, I can't shower, nothing. I tried to shower and all that came out was blood. I opened my closet and she was there. I'm too scared to do anything. I can't live like this. Suddenly, the connection cut out and the call ended. By this point, I was breathing kind of heavily. I waited a bit and nothing happened. He never came back online. I was sitting down on my chair a few hours later when my phone in my pocket starts ringing. I see it's from my friend. I decide it's best to answer the call. So that's what I do. Hello, I mumble. Dustin, he whispers. I'm scared shitless. She's in my room. I'm in the corner of my room, looking away from her. She's standing up a few feet away from me, standing there motionless. You, you've got, got to help me. I don't know what to say. I sit there and choke on my words for a bit. Dustin, he says a bit louder. Please. Everything goes silent. I can hear him breathing and choking for air, as if something is wrong. Just help me. There's a loud slam and a snap before the phone cuts out. I drop my phone in shock and back away from it. I can hear from the receiver. Come play with me, Dustin. Come play. I picked up my phone and smashed it up against the table until it was practically gone. I didn't sleep that night. I crawled into bed with my light on and sat there. I could have sworn I saw something in the window but it was probably just my mind playing tricks on me. I got on the bus the next morning shaking and worried, but everyone seemed fine, except my friend, who never got on the bus that morning. We passed by his house, only to see police and an ambulance surrounding the area. I barely have any time to look, but I catch a glimpse of someone on a stretcher being lifted into the ambulance. It was my friend, covered in blood and chalk.